You've heard that CO2 can boost your cannabis yields, and it can. But there's a few things you need to get dialed in first. Come on, let's break it down. But before we do, today's video is brought to you by Real Grow Lab. If you want to connect with the best growers from all over the world, get tips and tricks on how to grow the dankest plants possible, and not have to worry about the censorship we get from YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram. Go check out realgrowlab.com. Get all kinds of great grow talk Q&A. Plus, see all the stuff YouTube won't let me show you in these videos. Sign up and join our growing community over at realgrowlab.com. Or download the app at the Apple or Android App Store. Now let's get back to today's video. Yeah, come on, High C. This one's a difference maker. Okay, so I understand CO2 is what plants breathe in and what we breathe out. Yes. That's about as much as my knowledge goes on this one. Okay. Carbon. Carbon is the major building block of the plant material. It's all about carbon, right? Carbon is the building block of organic material. It's in cellulose. It's in glucose. All those things. You got the H2O, the hydrogen and the oxygen, and you combine it with the carbon, and that's how you build plant material. So the plant is made basically out of water and carbon. We know where the water's coming from. We need carbon. And there is carbon in the air, right? Yeah, it works. Nature works. There's about... 400 parts per million of carbon in the air. That's why outdoors, it's constantly getting replenished. You're never, it's not in a little sealed tent where you're running out constantly. So you can do really well. You've seen what outdoor looks like. You can grow huge, beautiful buds with full sun and just, amb they call it ambient carbon. It means 400 ppm is what it is outside. And I've noticed inside my tent, sometimes my carbon dips. Yeah. Well, what's happening? We're pulling that, the plant is pulling that carbon out of the air. It is turning it into plant material. What is it? I know you'll roll your eyes, but glucose, which is what the plant makes, it is C6H12O6. All right. It's six waters and six carbons joined together to make plant material. Well, once they're in as plant material, they're not in the air anymore. So if you have a digital meter, you're going to see that CO2 meter, that carbon meter go down. So I usually will be sucking air out of my lung room yep. into my tent to replenish the yeah. carbon. You add carbon. You boost your carbon in your, grow, in your grow room. Yes, and this is the difference between almost like turbocharged engine and a normally aspirated engine. I've seen some great, you know, normally aspirated engines, and you throw a turbocharger on there, it does make a difference. Uh, what I guess it's, it's a good analogy. Uh, air is going into the engine that's going to supercharge it. Uh, we want CO2 going into our plants. So by fortifying the room with CO2, so now instead of 400, say so we double it to 800. The CO2 is the food. So if we give the plant more food and light is the energy, and that's what we'll talk about next is if you match those up, you've got enough energy to eat that food and there's enough food there, you're probably going to get big and fat. And you actually go above 800 in your sure. room, right? How, how do you get the extra CO2 in there and what are, you, what are your CO2 levels usually at? For me, I'm running a lot of CO2. I'm running 11, 1200 ppm parts per million. That's how you measure CO2. And I use a tank. I'll use 20 pound tanks. I get CO2 tanks I get from the welding supply. That's the most efficient way for me in, in my small grow. Okay, and I saw when we were out at Michigan Matt's sure. spot, he had these big giant tanks that they would fill up with CO2. You've got something that is kind of like a home use. Yeah, a little 20 pound tank is what I have. You can get them at the welding supply place. They'll definitely know what you're doing with them. Don't even bother <laughs> lying. <laughs> I used to use when I had giant rooms, I would use uh, burners, which is like if you run your, uh, your uh, gas stove or if you run a barbecue and you were to have a CO2 meter, it goes up. That uh, when you burn a flame, we all know that it causes CO2. So that was used to be a really good way to get CO2 into a really big room. I, I revisited it recently, and I've had some trouble with it. I don't like uh, using the, the burners anymore. I know they put that chemical in there uh, so you can smell a gas leak. I don't have any proof on it, but something's weird. I, I suspect that's my plants don't like that, but I've gone out of my way to get the bottles of CO2. Okay, let's talk about lights because it's not just increasing your CO2 level. You no. said that'll give you more food for your plants, but they need that energy to metabolize that food. Sure. 
I th- I'd like to think of the light as, you know, your mouth has to chew, right? I need enough energy to actually chew. That's great. There's a bunch of food there, but I need to actually process it. So uh, the light gives the plant the energy to process the food and the CO2 is the food. So if you're adding CO2, you're going to up the intensity of your lights as well? Absolutely. Absolutely. You have to. I mean, you can just have food piling up, but if you can't chew it fast enough, it's just a waste, right? So you mentioned earlier matching your lights to your CO2 or trying to be in the same range. So if I'm up in my CO2 to 800, what do I need to do with my lights? PPFD, I think, is what you mentioned. Yeah, PPFD is lights. That's the amount of photons. And then PPM is the amount of gas, the amount of CO2. It took me like 25 years to figure this out, but I've just been matching the numbers lately. If I'm at 1,200 PPFD of light, I go 1,200 PPM of CO2. About 13, 1400 is about the maximum amount of CO2 the plant can absorb. And I think that's very similar to the amount of light, the DLI that the plant can get. Man, for 12 hours a day, I don't think you can use much more than that. So I'm going to measure the PPFD with a little meter at canopy level. And then I'm going to look at my digital CO2 meter and make sure they're, they're very similar. And you're shooting for about 11, 1200 mm-hmm. PPM of CO2 yep. and about the same PPFD at the canopy level? Yep. And what have, you just get diminishing returns. P- I know people that crank the CO2 up to 1500. I know people that crank their lights up to 1500. You have to run so much, it's cost so much more power, so much more heat. Uh, and you're probably hitting your DLI already. So I find so you'll see it if you look at charts, very much diminishing returns past about 1,200 of either. So, yeah, consider just topping out at 1,200. You get great performance there. All right. So if I'm adding extra CO2, sure. I need to take lights into account. I also need to adjust my temperature, humidity. How does that work? Yeah, you want to speed everything up. Think about if it's 65 degrees and I'm supposed to get moving. I could have uh, all the food that I need, all the oxygen that I need, but I'm still gonna gonna be chilly, you know? You get me up to that perfect temperature, I think room temperature, perfect temperature is around 77 for humans. It's about really close for plants too. So with CO2, I bump it up even a little bit more. I made, an, I made a New Year's resolution to run my room hotter. Actually doing all this research, I turned my room up a few degrees hotter. I'm going to try to run my room right at about 80 degrees so I get the maximum amount of, of, of energy. You know, the plant's metabolism, I want to speed it up. And I have more food in the room. I need more energy to eat it, right? I don't want to be freezing cold while I do that. There's a perfect temperature for it, right? So what scares me about that right off the top is warmer room temps yeah. also can come with problems. Well, I mean, we want things to go plants a living thing, right? We want it to grow fast. We want to speed up its metabolism. It's not crazy to think that that's going to speed up the metabolism of other things like bugs, like fungi and mold and mildews. We all know they grow in hot, a lot of times hot, humid climates or hot, dry climates. But that heat does have a lot to do with that. So, yeah, when you speed up the plant's metabolism, you just expect everything else to speed up with it. So you better be on your game when it comes to IPM, pests, molds and mildews. You really got to be looking out for them because everything's on turbo. And then the last thing that I'm thinking is, as I'm going to harvest, do I want it to be 80 degrees in there still? I'm worried about my terpenes. Yeah. You know, I've been thinking about this and doing some research on it. And terpenes, you know how they call them secondary metabolites? The primary metabolite is the plant material itself. That's hard to make. That's, that's you know, you got to have carbon and oxygen. It has to be assembled and... The terpenes are a lot easier to make. They are carbon and hydrogen. So as I I realized this, that even though the plant's not growing huge the last week or 10 days, the terpenes are still piling on. The plant still has plenty of metabolism to make those secondary metabolites. And then what about trichomes? Because I I also know that trichomes can start bursting when it's too hot as well and that's a lot of the change in temperature makes them burst but the idea is that these are still making secondary metabolites uh, all into the into the end of flowering so yes you're probably losing some by running your room a little bit hotter but you're speeding up the plant's metabolism to make more so this is something that like i said i just turned my volume up i just turned my heat up rather So we'll see. But it's very interesting. The science here is super interesting, no? 
But that is just what I think is what I'm trying with CO2 this year. But what about y'all? Do you use CO2? Do you crank it up or down at the end of the cycle? Come on, let me know in the comments. And if you dug this video, come on, hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. Share this one with another grower you know. And come on, check out the other couple of videos YouTube's recommending. We think you'll dig them.